let's go ahead and leap into the tool. So I have already signed in to Genesis. I hope you've done likewise. We're looking at the Project Explorer. The best way to get oriented is to walk through a sample project. So from the application menu, that's the G in the upper corner, we can import a data file. So I'm going to import and we need to navigate to those data files just to show you where they are in a standard installation. They're in the C drive, program files x86, in the Vitec folder, the Genesis Collaborative Edition, samples, project samples. We're gonna load the fast food sample. So select that, hit open. Now don't click too fast because you'll click right past an interesting point. Most times when we're importing the data, we simply click quickly through the wizard. But when you load data into Genesis, something that most people miss is you can select the aspect being imported and tailor it. In other words, if I did not want all of this data, if I only wanted the structure, the scheme of the utilities, et cetera, I could deselect the options here. That's fine. I want to simply select next. I'm going to allow it to create a new project hit import. So we now have a new project and we can begin to explore our main Genesis UI. So you've already noticed that this is an Office 2013, 2016, 2019 type motif. So it's a ribbon style motif. I already mentioned the application menu in the upper left hand corner. We have undo redo arrows. Uh, the ribbon is customizable. One of the things that was introduced in the most recent version, we can customize the ribbon to add commands that we wish. The main screen here is referred to as the home screen. You'll see five common options and then the projects that you have access to. Let's go ahead and open the project that we just imported. So I'm going to come to my home and open fast food. We're going to see the same navigation structure here. So here we go. So in the sample fast food, the description, the guidance, what questions were we framing this project to answer and some configuration information. We may come back here later. The main navigation structure, these are the systems engineering concepts of interest, the same language that we saw earlier. Components, if you wanna look at the implementation architecture, functions if you wish to look at the behavior architecture, requirements. Above that list, this essentials is called the facilities dropdown. It's what allows you to see subsets of the systems engineering class set. So if I drop down and ask for all classes, we'll see a much longer list. The drop down here simply allows me to narrow what I'm looking at at any given time. So we'll go back to essentials. Down below, we see search results, we see schema, utilities, but we really wanna focus here on the systems engineering information of interest. If you select a concept, we read the Genesis information, the Genesis Project Explorer left to right, select component. Now we will see all of the entities, all of the objects in our model of type component. So I can see that currently I'm dealing with a fast food system with a building and cooks and staff, et cetera. If I select the fast food system, now the right side of my screen populates with information about that entity. Generically up top, I'm looking at descriptive information attributes. Down here towards the bottom, I'm looking at a panel of valid relationships, ways that I'm allowed to interconnect to other knowledge in the system. And then this gives me a list of my existing relationships, the targets and attributes. Now you'll notice two sets of tabs. The set of tabs in the middle allow us to see different types of information about the fast food system. Attributes are the descriptive attributes for this entity. These differ based upon the class. So if I was looking at a function, I would need different information to characterize than say a requirement or a component. The properties. That's information that Genesis uses for its purposes, its environment. The unique ID, where the entity is located, some graphical inf uh, information, a change log to understand who's made changes. Parameters are fundamentally the numerics of design. 
and diagnostics give us a pointer to any errors. That's the middle tab here. What about the bottom tab? The bottom set of tabs allows us to visualize this information, this fast food system from any number of viewpoints. I might look at it as a property sheet. I might look at it as a, as a hierarchy. And we're reinforcing the idea that we're looking at the same fundamental information. We're visualizing it our way for our analysis or communication purpose. Okay, let's come back and quickly see how we can manipulate this interface. We've seen how to browse it. What if I wanted to create a new entity? One of the things that you'll learn in Genesis is there are probably three or more ways to do anything you wish. You can probably do it via the ribbon. You can do it via context menu. You can do it via shortcut. So let's use this as an example. If I wanted to create a new component with component selected, I can create new entity and I will create David's first entity. This will pop up now and it's accessible. I have information about it. I can click back to the attributes, et cetera. Uh, if I like context menu, I can right click, new entity, same command, same behavior. In the case of creating entities, we see that we have a special create panel up top because we do this very often. David's third entity, okay. Hit the create button. And in this case, double clicking the class is a shortcut to create as well. So multiple ways, find the style that works best for you. I tend to be a context menu and a shortcut person. I like the ribbons when I'm first getting used to a tool, but I don't wanna navigate all the way to the top of the screen. I like to keep my mouse where it is. We're very familiar with filling out property sheets, attributes of information about something. The key concept though in systems engineering is not the individual pieces of data, it's the interrelationships between them. So creating relationships is critical. So I'm going to take this David's first entity, I'm gonna quickly rename it to be my parent entity and everything else I'm gonna make a child of it just so that you can see the concept. So here I see my parent entity, I see all valid relationships. There are two that were pre-created for me but a parent is built from its children. Well, the common way of establishing a relationship in Genesis is by navigating to the property sheet, selecting the relationship that you want. In this case, a parent is built from its children. I could select it, right click edit targets, or I could double click and Genesis will bring up a target window for me. Genesis will not allow us to establish invalid relationships. I see I can only be built from other components and let's be built from component one, add close, and we will see it now pop up over in this list. That's the most common way of establishing relationships. The way I tend to do it is actually via drag drop. So anywhere in Genesis, if you drag an entity on top of another entity, it's a shortcut for creating a relationship. So I can click on component one, for example, I'm gonna click hold for beat, and then I'm gonna drag drop it onto parent entity. Genesis says, this is the valid set of relationships between these two things. In this, in this case, a child, I was dragging the child, a child is built in the parent. So I establish it there. And so I can see component one in, is built in the parent, parent is built from. So, you can drag drop entities from lists to lists, from lists onto diagrams, diagrams onto lists, it doesn't matter. Two more things before we complete this orientation. The first is the difference between remove and delete, a very, very important concept in Genesis. So many times you will see an option to remove. For example, I can select component one, right click, and I can remove the target. I can also later on remove from a diagram. What this means is I want to keep this entity in my database, but I wanna break a given relationship. I wanna remove the relationship that it has on the diagram. I wanna remove the relationship to the object. If I remove target, I will see that I broke the target here, but component 001 still exists right here. All right, what about 
let's see, let me establish a different relationship. I'm going to establish David's third entity onto this built in. So now what happens if instead of removing, I delete? If I delete something from Genesis, I delete it completely from the database. I relate, remove all relationships and remove it from the project. So I can delete it here, right click, get to the entity menu and delete. Genesis will warn you. So if you get a warning, don't click through rapidly. You'll notice there was no warning on remove. So we'll hit yes. We'll notice when we do it, it's removed from the list. Now I do have undo redo in the context of these lists and these attributes within the Project Explorer. So I can come back up and I can undo and it will restore. But if that's limited to the lists here. Last thing, let's go back home and let's point to two resources that you'll wanna keep track of. One is documentation. If you click documentation, this opens the file folder with the Genesis installation. It has connector guides, but perhaps more importantly, it has system definition guides that help point you in the right direction as you're applying systems engineering, how to use this information model and understand what concepts should I be using? How should I be populating them? The other piece of information whether it's here on the home screen or here on any screen in the upper right is the help. And there's very good help with Genesis. So I could quickly navigate to the Project Explorer. I could understand how is the browser pane set up? How do I leverage project properties, et cetera? Mm -hmm.